Hello, my name is Quentin Neary. I'm the president and CEO of McDonald Vines Exploration. Uh, it's January 27th, uh, 2021. Most of us in Canada are in the middle of a COVID lockdown at the moment and working from home. Uh, McDonald Mines uh, is continuing to explore its Scatting Joe Van power line property uh, east of Sudbury. We do have a drill on site currently, and I'm here to take you through a brief discussion and presentation of, of some of the data we collected in the summer. Specifically, we're going to look at some IP data, uh, which is induced polarization that we did across a, a number of segments on the property. We did a number of different grids and um, show you some of the drill core that we actually just got out from doing that. Um, just recently, yesterday, uh, Inside Exploration just uh, launched an uh, interactive claim map for McDonald Bynes, which uh, I suggest a lot of you, if you're interested, take a look at that. At this, you can see some of the exciting results we've had at scatting and also have, you know, an understanding of some of the geological trends and uh, contacts we're following as, as we expand the gold mineralization that we see at scatting. For those of you familiar with the project, we've spent the last while, uh, last two years, effectively uh, exploring the, the scatting site proper. We've had some, obviously, some excellent uh, drilling results from there for gold mineralization. Uh, you can see some of the highlights we have here. You know, I'll point out a couple of them, you know, 52 grams of gold over 12 meters, 59 over 19. Uh, but typically what this property produced in the past was an average head grade uh, of just under 9 grams per tonne. So this was sort of where we had concentrated our efforts and the reason for that, we had the preponderance of the information here. We also had known gold mineralization that we figured we could figure out and based on that expand uh, the mineralization at the property based on what we discovered here. So effectively we had some mineralization, we knew carried gold and our plan was to be able to identify that and learn about the structures that controlled it and follow up on those. So we finished drilling at Scadding uh, December 18th, 2020. And as we were waiting and are waiting uh, for assay results from the last holes that we drilled at Scadding, we took this as an opportunity uh, to go explore some of our other highly prospective targets that we had identified with our, with our IP surveys. Uh, so we moved the drill 12 kilometers you know, to the east, and, and currently we're drilling at Jovan. Um, part of the Jovan showing includes the uh, what we call the Brady showing, which has some some you know very exciting polymetallic uh, mineralization. And in, again, there are videos here where you can interact and go through more details on that. But again, when I say polymetallic, we we see significant grades of copper, uh, nickel, cobalt, and and obviously gold. And actually, in some cases, we pick up some silver as well. Um, this was one of the reasons we decided to do an IP survey in this area. So once again, I suggest if you have the time, you look at Inside Exploration and go through this interactive map because there's some good videos on it and some good information. But now let's move on to the IP data. So as you recall, we uh, I mentioned we had gone uh, east and we had gone to the Jovan property. And this is a smaller uh, segment of the Jovan property where we concentrated this IP survey. It's approximately a kilometer long by 650 meters uh, north-south dimensions. <coughs> And what we're looking at here is the resistivity data. Um, I'm just going to zoom us in and, and move us around uh, to give you a reference of where we are. This is a claim map. So this survey area is here where the scatting would be off in this direction approximately uh, 11 kilometers as the crow fly. Still has excellent uh, infrastructure, rail line as you can see here, and all-weather road access. So again, what we're looking at uh, currently is a plan map of the resistivity data. So this is the resistivity data that we collected in the summer of 2021. Of interest, what you see here is there's high resistivities, which are shown in uh, the reds, and we have low resistivity trends, which uh, are displayed as blue. Um, interesting for us, there's obviously a significant contact through here of low resistivity or conductive material uh, with a break. We can see that there's likely a north, you know, northeast trending break that cuts through this significant conductor that runs sort of in an east-west direction. 
So this is the raw resistivity data. And what we do with this data is we take it and it gets modeled into 3D models. And, and usually that's the interpretation that we uh, tend to look at. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll have a look at the 3D information that we have at the moment. Uh, I just need to change maps. So this is a 3D view uh, of the resistivity data. No, it's not. It's a metal factor. So let's look at the resistivity data. So again, this is the same data, but however, now it's been inverted. So before it was apparent resistivity, apparent being that's what we measured in the field based on geometric factors. And now this is the modeled resistivity. So these are now uh, not measured results, but theoretical values that through a series of software iterations we have modeled. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is a plan view, north being up. We're going to cut down uh, through this resistivity section, starting at surface, um, and we'll go to depth. Now you can see the east-west trend uh, that we were talking about before. Definitely shows up at depth, and this shows up at approximately um, you know, 200 meters below surface. We start to really see a distinctive break in the resistivity across the thing, and you can see it extends uh, to depth. Um, so based on that, let's, uh, let's clip some of the data, because again, these are 3D models. You can see, we can see uh, that this is a 3D shell. So what I want to show you guys is this low resistivity or, or conductive zone. So we're going to cut some of the data, and we'll reduce that to about 3,500. Um, and this should represent uh, our low resistivity trends. Of interest, you can see we still see that major break that we saw in the plan map. And we can see that this low resistivity or conductive unit, if you will, extends to great depth. And we obviously didn't cover it all. It extends beyond the survey area to both the east and to the west. Um, you know, so that was quite interesting for us. Um, what does low resistivity or conductive uh, mean? It just means that the electrical properties of this are such that current throws, flows through the rocks here better. Typically, we associate that with the presence of sometimes sulfides or conductive rocks uh, such as chlorites. Uh, those can also be represent uh, low resistivity. So the other component we collect when we do this type of survey is the chargeability data. So now we're going to look at the chargeability data. So there's two components. The chargeability uh, measures the ability of the rocks within the ground to hold a charge. And the longer something holds a charge, meaning it acts like a little battery for a while, uh, the more chargeable it is. And again, this we generally associate with sulfides. Typically with IP surveys, we're looking for disseminated sulfides. Um, at the scatting deposit, where we're found significant gold mineralization, the gold is usually associated with some type of iron sulfide and also with chlorides. So if we're looking for gold mineralization on our property, these are sort of the, some of the telltale things we look for. So again, we're going to go through the same process. We're going to slice this thing down, looking into the earth, and see if we can see any significant trends. So if you recall, we had a low resistivity trend that ran east-west through here. In the break, where we see this no south trend, we have a very high uh, chargeability uh, target. So I'm going to pick that as a shell or a range of values to look at. We'll clip out the low ones. We're not too interested in that. And then we'll bring that up to surface and we'll just maybe a little more of that, something like that, so we can see how, how that sits and interacts uh, within our survey area. Uh, I'm going to cut a bit of the surface clutter out. But we can see this, uh, this thing subcrops and also extends to great depth. So if I'm looking at this, uh, I, I would say that there's sulfides associated with this, with this target. If you recall from my last video, if you did watch it, um, I talked about something we called the metal factor. Uh, the metal factor is a relationship between the resistivity data and the chargeability data. It can be a simple ratio, uh, but we tend to look at it a, a little di bit differently, and we use this association um, to look at highly prospective targets for the type of mineralization we're looking for, and generally use the metal factor as a targeting device for our drill holes. 
So we've calculated the metal factor. And again, we're looking at surface, zoom out to plan, so north is up. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're, going to, we're going to cut this metal factor down and show you how things change with depth. And we can see a trend developing. So we're going to focus on, I want to focus on that metal factor trend. So I'm going to cut our data. Oh, something will go close to that. Um, you know, we can look at that. And we can extend that to surface. Actually, I'll, I'll trim that out a bit more so we can look at that. So this is our high metal factor. And how does that fit with the other targets we've seen? Well, we can turn on the chargeability. We can see that there's correlation with the chargeability, but there's anti-correlation as well. The high metal factor, obviously, the chargeability extends beyond the metal factor in certain areas. In other areas, it's coincidental. And the same thing will happen with the resistivity. So if we look at that resistivity shell we showed, so we have huge metal factor associated with this side of the resistivity low, and the metal factor tends to surround uh, the resistivity low, or conductive unit, and less so at this side, although they still are coincidental there. If we, um, if we fade out the resistivity, give me a second, we can see how these things all fit together. So you can see there, you can see that the metal factor sits in within uh, the low resistivity unit and is actually a little better defined. This was an exciting thing for us. Um, this has the attributes that we expected to see with gold mineralization. These are the types of things we were looking for. This was the reason we did the IP survey was the hopes of finding something like this. Um, so what we did uh, just recently, and I'm going to turn off the resistivity data, and we'll just look at the metal factor, is we've completed two holes. We, we started drilling on January 11th here, and we drilled two holes, uh, one being hole number 84 and the other one being 85. Now, these holes intersected the metal factor, and, you know, what we discovered was, was pretty exciting. Both holes uh, intersected highly sheared materials, and we did see significant mineralization in the form of sulfides, pyrotite, pyrite, calcopyrite. And, you know, for now, I'll take you and we'll, we'll go through some of the images uh, of the core that we've seen. Okay, let's look at some of the core uh, from the Jovan property. Uh, reminder, uh, we've processed this car core, meaning that we've logged it, uh, we've cut it, we've taken pictures of it, we've taken our structural measurements, and this half the core has been sent for assaying. We do not have any results back from this, so just want to clarify that, although for us it's fairly exciting. So what was the intersection in that me high metal factor zone? Well, here's a pretty good description of it. You can see that it's uh, massive to semi-massive uh, sulfides. In this case, it exists uh, pyrite, pyrotite, and, and some visible calcopyrite. And again, these are all the same mineralization assemblages that we saw at the Brady showing, okay? So for us, this is very exciting. It's on trend with the Brady showing. It shows us that the IP is mapping uh, these, this high sulfide zone um, and that we're able to follow it. And we don't know what the mineralization or the assay results are going to be like yet, but it does give us a trend to follow. Uh, just some more look at this, we can see that uh, there's significant hydrothermal activity. Again, highly uh, tortured uh, mineralization. These are all good things. Uh, the other interesting thing that we see here is in the same hole, we see very similar mineral assemblages and the same structural and uh, chlorite invasion of breaches around the high mineralization. So if we saw this type of core at scatting, we would be very exciting. It, we can see that the chlorite is starting to invade within, within the, the structures. It's brecciated, it's bra broken up, and it has trace mineralization. So these are all the characteristics that uh, when we see it scatting, we're you know, pretty excited because we expect it to carry some of the high grade uh, core mineralization that we see. Moving on, you can see again, just this uh, high zone of high metal factor zone carries significant sulfides. Again, another example, we can see that it's stretched, it's sheared, and again, uh, chlorite is starting to become uh, invasive. More pictures of that, just 
So this gives you a good example of what we believe that IP target represents. Um, it's very exciting for us. Uh, you know, we're obviously waiting for results, and as soon as we get them, uh, we'll be putting them out, and we we all hope that those will be, you know, great and exciting for us. Really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope that you found this informative. And again, I, I'd like to remind you guys and everyone to go look at the interactive map that we have out with Inside Exploration. You'll find it useful if you're interested in McDonald Mines and the Scatting Project.